we have never seen before. This day in which we will rejoice and be glad. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity, O oh God, to bless and worship your name, to give you all the glory, O oh God, that's due unto you, King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are everything, O oh God, we need you to be. So today, God, we just bless your name. We praise you. We adore you. We exalt you. We extol you, Lord, because you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory, the honor, O oh God. You deserve it all because you are good. So we praise you today, O oh God. We praise you because it's the right thing to do. We praise you, God. Because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. So we lift you up today. We glorify your name, O oh God. We praise you even in our circumstances. We praise your name. We adore you, O oh God. We know that worship is our weapon. So we worship you today, Lord. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Because such is whom you seek, O oh God, to worship you. So Lord, go before us today, even as we wait on you. Even as we wait, O oh God, to hear a word from you. I thank you now, Lord, that you will speak to us today like never before. I thank you, Lord, that your word will reach our hearts today it will penetrate the deep recesses oh god even of our soul because your word is powerful it is true it is spirit and it is life lord we thank you now bless your people each of them oh god each of them in a very special way let your blessings oh god fall on them like rain Cause them, O oh God, to empty themselves and to turn their cups up to you, ready to be filled with more of you, O oh God. So we thank you now. Take charge of the airwaves, mighty God. Take charge of the airwaves, O oh God. And let your word go forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. So much so that it causes change and transformation to take place in each of our lives, O oh God. Yes, Lord. We bless your holy name now. We praise and magnify your name, O oh God. Because you are good. So we thank you now, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, O oh God. We will not take it for granted because there are many who went to bed last night and they're not alive or awake today. So Lord, we will praise you with this breath that you have given unto us today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the word of God. And it is my hope that today you will be encouraged. You will be uplifted. You will be strengthened. And you will be able to see what God is doing in your life. Some are confused right now. Some do not understand. But God knows what he is doing. Yes, he does. All right. He's an awesome God. Look what he has done. Today is the 24th day of May 2019. Who would have thought? Some of us. Who would have thought that we would have even lived to see this day? Because we have been through some tough times. Trying times tribulations, troubles on every side, 
but look what the Lord has done. He brought us to this magnificent day. And yes, the trials may still be there. The struggles may still be going on. But God is more than able. Yes, he is. More than. More than able. All right? So you just hang in there with God. And watch him work out the details of your life. Watch God work. Watch God do what he's good at. He's good at fixing things. Fixing situations. It doesn't matter how difficult they seem. He's the God that specializes in the impossible Yes, this is not cliche stuff, friends. This is real. This is the God that we serve. He is as real as ever. Just think about the times that he took care of you before. And then ask yourself, wouldn't he do it again? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Lord delights in taking care of his people. So today, knowing all of that, knowing all of that, let's be reminded that there is peace and fullness of joy in the Lord's loving presence. Remember, he loves us with an everlasting love. And even though this may sound basic, basic stuff, elementary stuff, it is real. It's the real deal. If we can grasp how much God loves us, then we would understand that he's not going to put us out to dry. Yes, the situation may feel as if it's killing us. I could tell you about some situations that caused me to feel like that. But God, but God, and one of the biggest lessons I've learned and I'm still learning is that the love that God has for me has nothing to do with how I feel. Oh yes, it transcends my emotions. It transcends how I feel. I mentioned to us the other morning that sometimes we don't feel like we're saved. We don't feel like we're Christians. We feel dry. We feel abandoned. But God is there. That's a fact. All right? That's the truth. God is with us. Once there is life, there is hope. We may fall down. But someone once said, if I fall down, I hope I fall on my back. Because if I can look up, I can get up. You will not be in the same position all the time. Things are going to change. All right? Nothing lasts forever. Only salvation. No situation is permanent. No, the devil may say that, but he's a liar. He's a liar. There is peace and fullness of joy in the loving presence of the Lord. So today, friends, let's hear what the Lord is saying to us in this regard. Listen here. There is peace and fullness of joy in my loving presence. Look for me as you go through this day. I am eager to be found by you. I never lose sight of you. I watch over you continually. However, there are many ways you can lose sight of me. Most of these are just temporary distractions which abound in the world. The remedy is simple. Remind yourself that I am with you. A much more serious problem is forsaking your first love. If you realize this has happened, repent and run back to me. Confess the idols that have drawn you away from me. Take time to receive my forgiveness with thanksgiving. Collaborate with me in rearranging your priorities, making me first in your life. As you spend time in my presence, think about who I am, king of the universe, light of the world. Bask in this light of life so that you can reflect me to others. While you are delighting in me, I fill you, I fill you. Fill you up with love, joy, and peace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Y'all heard that, friends. While we delight, 
ourselves in the Lord. He fills us with his love, joy, and peace. You see, a lot of what we go through from time to time, friends, it's conditional. Some of the things that we have to face, the Lord has provided the solution. But it's conditional. There is an if somewhere there. If, if, if we should obey God. If we should delight ourselves in, in him. If we should do what he has asked us to do, then he will deliver on his end because you see the conditions are not to make things so difficult for us that we cannot reach them the Lord is not trying to punish us he's not trying to kill us but he's trying to grow us to strengthen us do you know that after you have come through your circumstances your trials your tribulations your stuff that the Lord can use that and use you to build and strengthen somebody else. Oh yes, it doesn't matter how you see yourself. Some say, you know what? I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a prayer warrior. I'm just me. Well, the Lord can use just you to build somebody because of what you have gone through, because of the experiences that you have had. All right, let's see what the word of God is saying because everything that we're looking for is in his word. When we are reminded about where we stand in God, we look in the word. That's our manual for life. Some of us don't like to read it, but I'm saying that's where the answers are. That's where the solutions are. If only we would read it. Let's look at psalm 121 verse 8 and it says the lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore the lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever do you believe that friends do you believe that the lord is keeping watch over you as you come and as you go and it's not just no but it will be forever. Let's take the word of God to heart. Let's believe his word. Let's believe that when his word says that he keeps watch over us as we come and as we go, that that's exactly what he's doing. Our God doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. And that is why when we go through, he understands. He sees sometimes even the injustice that some go through. He sees the problems and the unfairness of certain situations that his people go through. But he keeps a watch. And there's this song that we love so much, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows. Yes, he does. He knows, he sees what's going on. He sees everything. But he has committed to us to keep a watch over us. All right, trust the word of God. In Revelations 2 4, there is a stern admonition there. All right, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. In other words, he's saying, But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Wow. Could it be that we feel lost in our situations because we have left God out of the equation? We're not as committed as we were before. We don't love him as much because when we love God, we obey him. When we love God, we do what he says. When we love God, we just obey. Even in times when it seems difficult. So the Lord is drawing us back to him. He's saying, hey, come back to your first love. Come back to me. Listen, John 8, 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. 
He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Put another way, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Friends, our Savior is the light of the world. And once we follow him, we will not walk in darkness. We will not do those things that are not right, not convenient, not pleasing in his sight. We would stay close to him because you see a lot of the heartaches that we face come from us doing our own thing. Yes, going off on our own and just trying to make things happen without seeking the Lord. So when he says, come back to your first love, he's going to be our guide. Then Christ is saying, I am the light, the light of the world. And if we follow him, we will never walk in darkness because we will have that light that leads to life. And I would like to say life more abundantly. When we follow Christ, it's not going to be you know, nice all the time, but we have confidence in the one who has the light, the light that we need in our lives, even when things get a little dark, when things get a little frustrating and overwhelming, we need that light in our lives, and that's Christ. But how are we going to achieve that? How are we going to attain that? We have to draw closer to him. Right? It's a daily walk. Now in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There is no law against these things. Do you have love? Do you have the joy and the peace of God? That's what we're talking about today. There is peace and fullness of joy in the loving presence of the Lord. Are, are we exercising the fruit of the Spirit? Because all of it, all of it, it's one fruit with various compartments. So we need to have each component in our lives, love, do we love God, really? Do we love one another? Do we love ourselves? Do we have the joy of the Lord? Do we have that level of peace that passes all understanding? Are we long-suffering? Do we know how to suffer long? Do we know that the things that we go through, they're only temporary? So we shouldn't worry and allow them to cause us to feel as if, you know, we're stuck. No, we're not. Are we gentle? <laughs> Some of us would say sometimes. Do we exercise goodness, faith? Are we meek? You know, these are the things that once they are present in our lives, we'll be all right. We'll be fine. Some say, but how do I get to that? First of all, read God's word. Develop a relationship with him. Know that he loves us and he wants the best for us. Yes, there will be times of suffering. Yes, sometimes it carries on for a very long time. And you wonder, when is this going to end? When, 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 Lord, when? But he wants you to hold on. Hold on to him. Hold on to his unchanging hands. All right? When the road is hard, when the enemies rise up against you. These are some of the things that cause people to become discouraged. Oh yes, it happens everywhere. I used to think certain things only happened in some places, but no, these things happen everywhere. The enemy, you see, he has his cohorts, his people that work for him, and they're fanned out all over. So wherever you are, sometimes you come under attack. But the Lord is there fighting for you. So you know that you're already a victor. It may not feel like it. 
Things may not look that way, but you have to trust God. All right? You have to trust God today, friends. Trust the Lord and know that there is peace and there is fullness of joy in his loving presence. Are we abiding in his presence? Are we living in his presence? Or do we get up every day and we're in a rush and we run off and we just do our own thing? And the Lord is there and we forget about him. But then we remember him when things get on the rough side. Because you see, friends, we cannot make it without the Lord. All right? We cannot make it without the Lord. So today, on this Friday, this wonderful Friday that the Lord has given us, make up your mind. Make up your mind that you're going to return to your first love, which is God. Some will say, well, I didn't really go anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. But he's saying, come closer. Because you see, it doesn't matter where you are in him. No, there is always more. There is always more in God. All right? There is. So return to your first love. Put God first. Put him ahead of your decisions. Put him ahead of everything that you're planning to do. Ask him to order your steps. Ask him to guide you. Don't act and then ask the Lord to bless. Or act and then ask the Lord to back you up. No, check with him first. All right? Then follow the Lord, who is the light of the world. And then exercise the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, it's not about emotions. It's not so much about emotions because our emotions can lead us wrong. Our emotions can get us to throw in the towel, to give up because we don't feel like God is there. We don't feel like he's there, but he is. And a lot of the things that we go through, it's a test, a test, a test, only a test. You will be strengthened afterwards. You will become a little toughy in God. All right? So that when situations arise again, you will stay calm because you know that God is able. That's where I'm trying to get to, my friends. Where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt each and every time that God is there and you don't worry. Because you trust him. All right, so I'm going to pray and ask the Lord just to help, help us, help those who are going through, who do not understand why the road is so difficult for them, why everything they try seems not to work, why everywhere that they turn seems as if it's a dead end, but the Lord is here today. He's here with us even now. Let us pray and just ask the Lord to help us. All right, let's pray. Father, we give you thanks today. We bless your holy name. We thank you, God, because you are great and greatly to be praised. We honor you for who you are. We glorify your holy name, O oh God. We love you. Lord, help us to grasp the depth of the love that you have for us. Lord, today, so many of your people are going through, going through hard times, difficult times, trying times. Yes, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you would just look into their lives and their situations even now we know we know that you're already there you're already with us we know oh god that is not so much about our feelings and our emotions but it's what your word has said and your word said you are the light of the world and if we follow you we will not have to walk in darkness so help us oh god to walk with you in the light. Help us, Father, to
to see that what we're going through is only temporary. Help us, Lord, to understand that it doesn't matter how difficult it gets. You are there. And this situation will not kill us. This too shall pass. Whatever our this is, O oh God, it shall pass. So help your people, O oh God, to hold on, hold on, hold on to you. Hold on to your promises. Hold on to your word. Your words are true. Hold on. Because in a moment when they think not, change comes. Transformation comes. Things that were never touched or dealt with in years, Lord, you can affect those things in a moment. Lord, I pray for your people today. I pray for their strength. I pray, oh God, that you would give them the strength to endure hardships. You would give them the strength, oh God, to hold on, to just endure, not to let go, because change is coming. Oh yes, change is coming. Give them a revelation, oh God, of who you are and the fact that you're able and you specialize in impossibilities. What man said could not work, would not work, would not happen, will surely happen because you have said it and we believe it and that's it. So help us, oh God, to listen to your voice, not the many voices around us that want to tell us that you're not there and it's not going to work and forget it. Oh God, help us. Help us to set aside those other voices and to tune in to you, oh God. Help us to draw closer and to grow our relationship with you. There is just so much more. So much more. So much more than even what we are facing now. So Lord, today, let this be a day of change. Let this be a day of transformation. Let this be the day, O oh God, when you come through for your people miraculously, supernaturally, breaking down walls, breaking barriers, breaking those things that are trying to stop and keep your people back from achieving their best in you, O oh God. Because, Lord, with you, we can do all things. Because you strengthen us. So today, God, we thank you for your strength. We thank you even for the wisdom, O oh God, that you would pour into our lives so that we would know how to move in this time, how to navigate the puzzles of life. Help us, O oh God, not to become so discouraged that we give up but to hold on to you. Yes, Lord. Do for us now more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, you can make it. Yes, you can. It doesn't matter who said what. All right? Because I'm, 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 speaking about these things from time to time because I'm telling you there are some people around us that if we're not careful we allow the things that they say to get into our spirits the negative things well I'm here today to say to you friends no don't let it happen God is on your side whatever it is that they think is not important as long as you know that God is with you. All right? Trust God. Trust God in your circumstances. Trust him to work out the details. Trust him. Watch him work. You will testify. Yes, you will testify of the goodness of God. You will succeed in every area that they expected you to fail those who are speaking ill and speaking 
evil over your lives. We cancel them now in the name of Jesus. And we say together that you will prosper. You will make it. You are chosen by God for such a time as this to make it. From before the foundation of the world, the Lord had a plan for you and you are now living that plan. Yes, it may sound a bit funny to those who are going through because you see going through is a part of life. It's a part of our reality to strengthen us. That's what it is for. I never saw it that way. When all of the different things that rose up against my life, I didn't realize that the Lord was preparing me for something. I couldn't see beyond my circumstances. I couldn't see beyond what I was facing. If anybody came and tried to encourage or uplift me, there were times when it would work somewhat. And there were times when I would just cry. I couldn't see beyond what I was facing. It was just too much. But I'm here to declare to you, friends, today, glory be to God, I can testify that while all of us, including me, still going through, I could tell you I'm not at that place where I used to be that place where I would become easily broken. No, I can tell you that with God, I am not easily broken. Yeah, the devil tries. He tries everything. I notice one of the ways that he comes at me, and you see, it, it, it's okay to mention it. It's okay to reveal it because he thinks that he can push me into a corner at times. But I find one of the ways that he tries to come at me which doesn't work anymore is through those who I love admire and respect and I have to guard my mind I have a lot of people in my life like that I do and I have to guard my heart and I have to guard my mind because the enemy is very subtle Okay, he's extremely subtle. He knows how to weave and work his way into our lives if we let him. The word of God says that we should resist him and he would flee from us. So don't be ignorant, friends, or naive about the way that he works. The Bible says do not be ignorant of his devices. He's crafty. He studies us. He plans for us. He thinks he knows exactly what our weakness is and he works on that to get us to go out of character and out of the plan that God has for us. So that is why we have to watch our temperament at times, you know, the things that make us angry easily, the things that get us upset. Because you see, he's working on us to try to get us to move out of godly character. And to do things that are pleasing to him, but displeases God because he tempts us. And when we yield, he laughs at us. Oh, yes. And it's because I can visualize him laughing a lot of times when I say, you know, Lord, help me today. Because I do not want to become the laughing stock of the devil. You understand? He pushes our buttons. And when we yield to that... Yeah, man, he laughed. I'm pretty sure he would maybe say, I didn't tell you to do that after he pushed you in that way. So let's watch, friends, our temperament. Let's watch the way that he sneaks up at us. You're on the job doing your work. Somebody just comes and they say something out of the way. Well, like we say, some foolishness that just ticks you off or it pushes you down the wrong zone. And by the time you catch yourself, you're, you're already <laughs> in hot water. You're already sin. You know, it's these things. It's things like these that causes us to stay at the feet of Christ. Because there are so many times that we just, you know, allow ourselves to fall into a lot of things. 
So let's be vigilant, friends. Let's be wise. Let's ask the Lord to be with us. He is already there, but speak to him, communicate with him. Stay close to him so that when the enemy comes in against us like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You see, he knows that the Lord has us surrounded. So any way that he can creep in, he does. So this is why we have to watch the way we live. Okay, watch the way we talk, watch the way we walk. Because he's always looking for an area or an avenue to accuse us. The Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren. He's looking for ways that he can shame you and embarrass you and disgrace you and bring you down. And he uses people around us to do it. Those who allow themselves to be used. To be used by him so be careful of that watch out for that watch for the ways that he tries to sneak up on you all right think i remember growing up when they would say when you feel yourself becoming angry start counting <laughs> well for some that work and for others not so much but i'm saying when you understand that the lord wants you to succeed even though the devil wants you to fail, stick with God. Stick with what he is saying to our lives. All right? Because I'm telling you, we're in the last days. The, the, we're in perilous times and the adversary, he has turned up the heat on the people of God. But we can turn up the heat back on him by walking by the Spirit. Because you see, we resist the devil one way to resist him is by living right living in such a way that our lives are above reproach i'm not saying that mistakes are not made or will not be made but when you find that it happens repent turn away turn back to god do it quickly before it gets to set in and ruin your life where you become now somebody who was walking with the lord but then you turn back you backslide and then get stuck in that zone. No, friends. Do not allow the enemy to push you to that point. All right? The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Yes. If you think sometimes that things are difficult as a Christian, some in the world do not have it easier. So do not let the devil fool you into thinking that if you should accept this bribe or if you should step away from the presence of God just this once, that things will be better. No, don't be tempted. Don't be fooled by the devil. Do not put yourself in any compromising situation where he gets the upper hand. And then he accuses you. Well, it wouldn't be an accusation if it's true, right? So let's watch that. We see the way that he's trying to push at us. Yes, we see what he's doing, how he's doing it, how he's trying to do it. So all we have to do is pray and ask the Lord to help us to go through and not to fail the test because you don't want to be going around the same mountain all the time you don't want next year you are still stuck no it's time to grow grow in god step away from the milk step away from the baby christianity i know that some are still young in the faith i know i'm aware that not everybody who you know joins this devotion are even saved i get it but once you have been living a life for Christ for a while, grow, grow in God, grow in your faith, grow, grow in love, grow in joy and peace, all of that, grow. Every problem is an opportunity for growth. If we look at it that way, then things would be a little better for us because then we wouldn't think all the time, that the Lord is trying to kill us, which is what I thought. All right. So I just wanted to give those additional few words of encouragement so that somebody today knows that what you're going through, the Lord understands. 
what you're going through, somebody else has been there and the Lord brought them out. All right. Even if you feel like you're backed into a corner and you feel so tempted to go and do something that is not right or not pleasing to God. No, hold on. Do not complicate things by running ahead of God. Wait, be patient. Yes, going through for a very long time, but hang in there. God will come through for you. As I said, I am a living testimony. Oh yes, that's why I speak like this. It's not because I'm trying to impress you. It's because I know who God is and I know what he can do. He can move mountains, literally, literally. He has been moving some in my life. So I know he's a mountain mover. Yes, he is. And he has put his word in our mouth. That's what I use, friends, the word of God. What has God said about my situation? What has God said about these circumstances? What has God said? Do not listen to the devil who then comes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he says, did God really say? That's what he did to Eve. Do not fall for that trick friends do not allow the devil to cause you to second guess what god has said do not when the lord said you are victorious you are when he says i've given you the victory you have it you are victorious you are whether you feel like it or not it would be good if you could grasp that and act like it act like you're victorious because you are you're not faking it till you make it no I don't believe in that at all. You don't have to fake anything. You have the real deal. All right? Change is coming. Change is coming to your life. And you have to believe that. Change is coming. Think about the last time God came through. Do you think he has changed? He's the same God today. Well, he was the same God yesterday. And he will be forever. All right so on this blessed friday friends you just make up your mind that you're going with god all the way all the way it doesn't matter come what me let them fight you're victorious let them slander you're victorious let them malign you're victorious let them continue with their lies you are victorious all right you're victorious you are everything that god says you are you are blessed and highly favored of the lord the blessings and the favors of god are not just for a specific set of people some would like you to think that it's like that they look down their noses at you as if you know they have arrived and you haven't even started the journey as yet don't believe it friends don't believe that for a minute because the moment you start to believe that is the more you're going to see yourself in a very terrible light when God has called you blessed. Listen, whom God has blessed, no man can curse. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. The world will know that you are blessed of the Lord. Does it have to do with material goods and possessions? No, friends. The joy, the joy and peace. Listen, there are people who have everything, but they don't have God. And they're unhappy. Unhappy. They, they, they will not admit it. But there's something missing from their lives. Because each of us have that void in us that only God can fill. So let's not try to stuff other things in there relationships jobs children people no no that space is reserved for god and god alone so don't get tempted to start you know putting people in high esteem and you leave god out of the equation it cannot work cannot work all right put god first in everything in all aspects of your life honor him be kind, be gentle, be loving, be giving. Some say they give until it hurts. No, you don't have to give until it hurts, but there will always be a time when you have to make a sacrifice. All right? Don't be afraid. 
to give. You cannot outgive God. Those who are in lack, those who are in need, just give. All right, find ways to give off your time, your talent, your treasures. Give unto the Lord. Give unto Him, even the glory that's due His name. Praise Him. That's giving too. Give Him the fruit of your lips. Instead of complaining, rejoice. Instead of saying how bad things are, rejoice, worship, praise. Sing a love song unto the Lord. Did you know that singing, singing can change a bad mood into a more positive one? Yeah, man, whether you, you're a big singer or not, just sing. Sing in the shower. Sing when you're alone. Sing even when you're around others, you know, as long as you're not disturbing them like I'm talking on the job. Just sing. Sing unto the Lord. Sing a song. There was a little song that I would always sing when, you know, I found myself between a rock and a hard place. I would just start singing, I've got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. And let me tell you, I've never sung that song and not come out victorious. I just had to remind myself of who God is. All right, don't forget. No, man, don't forget who God is. He's on your side. Let the host of hell come against your life. The Lord is about to drown some enemies in the sea. The same path that he opened for you to cross over, he will close it up and drown your enemies in it. And you say, Sister Diane, who are my enemies? It's anything or anyone that fights against the purpose of God on your life. Be it the devil and his demons, or those who allow themselves to be used by him to try and affect your life in a negative way. They will continue to try, but they will not succeed. All right? Your enemies will never triumph over you. The Lord will not allow it. Keep your heart clean, okay? Keep it pure. And keep your hands clean and watch what God will do. He fights for his people, man. Nowadays I laugh. I laugh a lot. I laugh, honestly, I laugh a lot. Because I see the enemy, you know, I see the way he's trying to push himself in. You know, one of, one of the things, and I'll, I'll say this and I'll, I'll end, you know. One of the things that is one of my, you know, everybody has a pet peeve or things that they don't like or things that, you know. But one of the things that really gets to me at times, it's when I interact with people, maybe like myself, <laughs> who, you know, they would say, do this or do that. But they don't do it or they're not willing to do it. You know what I mean? It's like they're pushing you into areas or zones that they're not willing to go themselves. Or they have expectations of you that they do not have of themselves. I call that hypocrisy. I, I can't work with it. And I find that, you know, I have to be asking the Lord to help me. Because I want, whenever I say something to you, my friends, that I'm willing to do it myself. Or I've already done it. So I'm not making a suggestion that I think, you know, well, I'm just pulling it out of a hat. No, it has to be based on the word. And I'm saying today to you, friends, the Lord is with you. I have proven him and he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't love me more than he does you. No such thing. Some would like to get you to feel that they have a special contract with God and that he values them more than he does you. That's not true, friends. So do not let anybody talk down to you and talk to you as if you're a nobody. You are somebody. You're special in God's eyes. Do not allow anyone to put you down. Some do it very subtly. Always trying to keep you under their feet. They do not want to see you 
arise and become. They suppress, they oppress, they, they try everything to get you to fail. All right, some give you a basket to carry water. And when the Lord helps you to accomplish it, you know, they, they, they get upset, they're, they're vexed because they never expected you to do it under the conditions that you had to work with. So that's what I'm saying to you today, that the Lord is on your side, all right? Encourage others. Practice what you're preaching. Whatever it is that you're saying to others, even as you go through, take a dose of your own medicine because I find that a lot of people are good at encouraging others, but they find it so hard to encourage themselves in the Lord. They could testify from now until tomorrow about the goodness of God, but then they're telling you how good God is, but when it comes to their situation, they don't believe God can do it. No. Friends, God is able. All right, so I leave you with that now. So do enjoy the rest of your Friday, the rest of your weekend. I pray that the Lord just covers you, keep you safe from all harm and danger. I pray that he would meet your needs, all those things that you are trusting him for. I pray that he will minister to your life in a powerful way, even starting today into the weekend, into next week. Trust him to come through for you. Some of you are facing deadlines. You're facing decisions. Whatever it is, trust God to come through for you. All right? He specializes in that. So you go on out over the weekend. Don't forget the assembling of yourselves. Well, you all know what that means. You know, don't let anything discourage you or keep you away from the presence of God. Or even the people who genuinely care about you. Yes, we know in a crowd, it can be difficult to discern, but the Lord will help you to know those who care about you. Don't write off an entire bunch because one person caused you to feel badly. Don't pull yourself away from the gatherings because of stuff like that. Because what the devil is trying to do is to isolate you. If you get to the point where you realize that a particular place or location is no longer relevant to your life, and I'm not talking about running at the first sign of trouble. But then ask the Lord to guide you and you move on. Alright? I always say, no church is perfect, but there's a perfect church for everybody. So you just ask the Lord to guide you and to lead you. And he will. All right, so until next time, friends, until we meet again in this fashion, take care.